In this video, we will browse through a gallery of visualizations and I will show you typical examples for visualizing XY relationships, amounts, distributions, proportions, geospatial data, trends and uncertainty. And I will show main pitfalls for each of these categories. And this will not be a complete list, obviously. The goal of doing this is that we get them used to the vocabulary and that we know what to search for when creating own plots and looking for inspiration. There are excellent overviews and categorizations. And in the slides accompanying this course, you will find the corresponding links. I will mainly follow the categorization by Wilke, the first reference. And let's start with uh, perhaps the most common type or XY relationships. On the left side, I show a line graph, different colors, different dash patterns. And on the right side, we see a scatter plot where we have added some lines that have been added to represent the trend. And we can also see confidence intervals and more about these uh, in a few slides later. Bubble plots on the left are popular as well. In this case, there are four dimensions encoded as X and Y values, size of the bubble and color of the bubbles. A pitfall of scatter plots can be overplotting. If there are too many dots or bubbles and then we can resort to, to bins or contours. If we need too many colors, it can indicate that we maybe need a different plot type. And on this slide, I show uh, a bin plot and a contour plot. In this case, it's a hexagonal bin plot. We could also use squares. On the right side, we see a contour plot. After uh, XY relationships, we turn to amounts. And I will show a few examples. A bar plot on the left, and we remember the principle of proportional ink from another video. So the bars need to start at zero. And instead of bars, we could have used dots. On the right side of the slide, we see we can group bars and we can do that horizontally or vertically. If there are too many colors in one group, it can be a bit hard to decipher. And what we can do then is to something so-called faceting by plotting individual colors in separate bar charts arranged like tiles. Bars can be stacked. And in this case, we arrange them horizontally, which was better for the longer labels. We should try to arrange them in a logical and intuitive order. Stacking can be useful when the sum of the amounts represents something meaningful. But note that the inner colors can be difficult to compare across rows. So this chart type works really well if there are only two bars in each stack. The heat map is a popular way of visualizing amounts depending on two variables. And it is related to the hexagonal and square bin plot, which we have seen a couple of slides earlier. Another category of visualizations are distributions. And here we show histograms faceted on the, on the left side of the slide. In other words, arranged in tiles. And on the right side, we see them layered. And when plotting histograms, always explore multiple bin widths to check, the data, check that the data represent, which one represent best the data. Histograms can be stacked, as seen on the left, but this can be difficult to interpret. Much better on the right side is the same data represented using a density plot. For density plots, check the scaling and the boundary conditions. Also remember that both histograms and density plots often require arbitrary parameter choices for binning or convolution. And we should report these parameters together with our plots. An interesting solution to show several distributions in one plot is this so-called ridgeline plot. In this case, we are plotting temperature distributions for the 12 months in Seattle, as an example. Distributions can also be represented by box plots, showing minimum, maximum, the median, and lower and upper quartiles, as well as violin plots to the right. Observe, however, how box plots can miss representing a changing structure in the data. Proportions, the classic pie chart on the left, not very space efficient in terms of data to ink ratio. On the right side, a stacked bar chart. 
Proportions can also be represented by stacked areas or densities on the left, or a tree map on the right. Let's talk about geospatial data. They require extra care, as it requires a choice because we are projecting from a 3D globe onto a 2D uh, surface, which introduces distortion. We can preserve either angles or areas, but not both. And on this slide, I show a couple of such projections, but uh, many more exist. And choropleth maps like this one work best when coloring represents a density. They can be problematic if the colors represent a quantity which is not a density. And we are used to seeing color plate maps such like this one, especially during election times. Note that this projection, in this projection, Alaska is too small compared to, to the mainland US. Finally, trends and uncertainty. We often represent trends by smoothing lines and there are a number of smoothing models to visualize trends averaging, polynomial fits, splines, loess spots, and they are very frequent and many visualization tools can compute these automatically. Uncertainty can also be visualized with the help of confidence bands, like in this example. And I will say a bit more about these bands later. We have mentioned uh, box plots earlier but there are also plots that can show error bars, and they are very common. Error bars can be extended horizontally or vertically or both. They can also be graded. It is, however, important to point out that there is no commonly accepted standard error for error bars. Uh, always indicate what these mean. Is this the standard deviation? Is this a standard error of the mean? Is, does it mean a confidence interval? Does it mean a credible interval? Always specify which de definition we are using for error bars. And once again, box plots can be problematic. They were invented when figures were still drawn by hand. Today we have computers and we can do often better. There are many more ways to visualize data and I encourage you to explore existing galleries, which are also linked from the lecture slides.